In this video, we are going to learn how to solve optimization problems. So, optimization problem means find the best value. So, when you say best value, it is not always the largest value. So, it can be the maximum value or the minimum value, depending on the situation. For example, if you have a company, you want to make sure that you're going to minimize the cost or maximize the profit. So, depending on the problem, it can be a maximization problem or a minimization problem. And also when we mean by the best value, best value in this case means the absolute maximum, the absolute maximum or absolute minimum, not the local maximum, local minimum. So this is something you have to be very careful when we say the absolute, the optimum value. So optimum value means always the absolute maximum or absolute minimum. Uh, so a problem like this have like a special structure. So all of these problems have what they call the objective function. So objective function is the one that you either going to maximize or minimize. So those functions have like a special format. So let's say y equal fx. And then they have special intervals. For example, sometimes you have a close interval. Sometimes you have open interval. So open intervals are the most common one. And sometimes you also have close intervals. Or in extreme situation, you also have half open intervals like this. Uh, but we we normally study the first two cases. And then also, there are something called constraint for these problems. So there's a constraint. So those constraints can be like, for example, sum is constant. So if you have like a number problem, maybe you can say, well, sums are constant. Or maybe the volume is constant. Or the perimeter is constant. Um, or maybe like, you know, if you want to make a product, you can say, oh, there are 500 kilograms of a material. So those are const, uh, what we normally call constraints. So under those constraints, you're going to find the objective. You're going to find the maximum value or the minimum value of the objective function, what we normally call extreme values of the objective function. So let's talk about some of the basics. So when you have a function like that, so this is like a nice smooth function. And you learn uh, in your calculus class that at uh, when the slope is zero, so the maximum, the local maximum or local minimum happens when the slope is zero. So at this point, you can see the derivative is zero. So if you know the function uh, f prime, so you can see f prime, if the value is a, f prime a equal zero. And also at the minimum value, you can see if you say, uh, if you say b, you can see that at the minimum value, f prime b equal a zero. Don't just say f prime equals zero. That doesn't make any sense. So you have to say at a value. So, so that is one case. So you can see at those maxima and minima, you see the derivative is zero. But that's not always the case. For example, if you look at a situation like this, and you can see that at the maxima minima, derivative does not exist. exist. So for example, if you call this is c, you can see at uh, at c if prime c uh, does not exist so if prime c does not exist and at the minimum point if you call that as d you can see that if prime d uh, does not exist so that means anything can happen either derivative is zero as last time or the derivative does not exist uh, like in a situation like that so actually this is uh, this is not a strange situation this is very common for example let's look at this situation so this is like a heartbeat of a person and you can see if you look at a situation like this you can see the maximum minimum happen uh, in those sharp corners so that means in those uh, absolute maximum minimum points the derivative doesn't exist so you can set um, the derivative equal to zero for these kind of problems so that means in this case you need to find where the derivative does not exist if you want to find the absolute maximum and minimum so it's like a very common problem um, so, so let's talk about uh, the, 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 the another case, like sometimes what will happen, so you know that the derivative is zero uh, at A, let's call it A, so derivative is zero here, and also derivative is zero there, uh, if you call this B, you can see the derivative is zero there, but unfortunately, the absolute maximum happened at a corner, so you can see that's the absolute maximum. So if you are looking for the absolute maximum, you cannot get this using uh, those, uh, you know, what normally called the critical points. Critical point means where the derivative is zero or doesn't exist. 
So, but you can see that in this problem, in this case, if this is the objective function, you cannot find the absolute maximum uh, using the derivative part. So that means we need to kind of remember, like you know, we learned uh, this topic earlier, like how to find the absolute maximum on a close interval. Uh, so that is the kind of situation we have right now. So I mean, you have to be very careful when you get a problem. What kind of situation we have? Sometimes it's like it's actually the critical point. Uh, that's normally happen when there's only one critical point. We can talk about that in a minute. So, but normally what happen is you need to find the absolute maximum or absolute minimum, or like uh, like in, in the given situation but sometimes you have close intervals and sometimes it's also happen at a corner so you need to be very careful what kind of situations you get so that means in this case the, the absolute maximum happen at an end point so so let's talk about the, uh, the 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 situation so what we have is mostly what happen is uh, we get the first case like case a so that's the most common case it's the most common one most uh, common one uh, the other ones uh, like happen rarely like a situation like this the absolute maximum is this one so but when you get a problem see like what kind of problem that you have otherwise like your answer may, may not be wrong may not be correct um, good so let's recall uh, some of the things that you learned earlier like how to find absolute uh, extrema on a close interval so let's say you have function y equal fx on the close interval so this has like four steps. What we normally do is we take the derivative and then use the derivative to find the critical points. But when you want to find the critical points, uh, what we know, there are two types of critical points. Remember, there's a one type of critical points coming from the numerator. So what you do, you set the numerator equal to zero. Then you get one type of critical points. The other type of critical points, you come from the denominator. And then uh, what we do is we're going to look at when the denominator is going to be zero. That's like a dividing by zero situation. In this case, what will happen? Derivative does not exist. That's when you get the, those sharp corners. And then, um, and then what we do? We can evaluate the function, the original function, at the critical points, and then evaluate the function at the endpoints, and pick the largest value as the absolute maximum, pick the smallest value as the absolute minimum. So that's like how you can find absolute maximum on a close interval. And then, but mostly what happens in problems that we're trying to do is like we have only, we have a very special case. What's a special case is we only have one critical point. So that's like a most common situation. But if there's only one critical point, so you want to mention that if there's only one critical point, then what will happen is then there is, uh, if there's only one critical point, only one critical point, then the absolute maximum minimum depending on the problem happen at the critical point so that's like a very easy, interesting case so if there is only one critical point then the absolute maximum minimum occurs at that point again depending on the problem it will be very clear when we try to do problems so uh, let's look at this situation for example in this case there's only one critical point and you can see uh, you can set the derivative equal to zero uh, at that point uh, point A and you can see that there are no more uh, critical points. So that means the absolute maximum happen at A Because you can see there are no other way another absolute maximum can happen because only one critical point So similarly even in this case, so you can see um, so you can see that uh, at uh, B B uh, So you can see the derivative does not exist and that's the critical point the derivative does not exist and you can see that there's exactly the absolute uh, minimum, absolute minimum. So this spe this special case is really important. Like right? if there's only one, if there's only one critical point, then the absolute maximum minimum, depending on the situation, happen at the uh, critical point. So remember this special case. So in this case, like if there's only one critical point, what will happen is the local, the local or the relative uh, local max min simply becomes the absolute maximum absolute maximum or minimum so that's the benefit of having only one critical point uh, then it should be the maximum uh, the absolute maximum minimum depending on the situation again because like you still have the corner points but that's not what we are talking about because depending on the problem you can say it should there should be maximum or there should be minimum and then it should happen at the critical point but sometimes what we do is you want to make sure that 
uh, sometimes like students lose points because of they they ignore this step because like you know, if you have a, just a problem and if you get a critical point in general you really don't know whether that's a maximum minimum so you get a critical point how do you know it's a maximum minimum so that means there is a uh, that's like a logical uh, connection there so you want to make sure that you're gonna you prove that it is a maximum minimum how we normally do that so this remember this step is really really important uh, because just to make sure that your problem is complete or your answer is complete you want to justify that you got a maximum minimum how we normally do we can use either first derivative test or the second derivative test to justify the answer that you get a maximum minimum so what is that if you look at the first derivative test what we normally do uh, we draw a sign diagram uh, with a sign of f prime and then uh, mark the critical point so you mark the critical point um, so let's see that's a critical point and then what we do we check the sign around it we check the sign around it so if this has a plus sign and if there's a minus sign that means there should be a absolute maximum there's a maximum axis we don't have the absolute it's so like a, a maximum it's a local maximum local uh, max and the same thing uh, what we do if we have a minus to plus then what happens is going to go like that minus to plus so then you have a absolute minimum you have absolute minimum so uh, this is the first derivative so you're going to use the first derivative test and then you can check the sign you can see okay sign change so that means there should be a absolute local maximum or local minimum uh, so absolute it should be local uh, there should be a, a local uh, maximum or minimum but since this is the only maximum or minimum uh, then you can see that there is a absolute maximum minimum at the end okay and then uh, the second derivative test so let's review the second derivative test so for the second derivative test what we need so c is a critical point so you want to make sure c is a critical point with the derivative at c is zero so this only works for that case and then if the second derivative is negative at the c then you can see that uh, there's a maximum why is the second derivative negative means uh, the first derivative is a decreasing function that's what it means second first derivative is a decreasing function second derivative negative means the first derivative is decreasing first derivative is decreasing so that means there should be a maximum and similarly if the second derivative is positive means the first derivative increases it's going like that so it's going to increase so it start with the negative go to positive value so it increases so if prime increases that means there should be a minimum so that's the idea so that's the second derivative test so if the second derivative is negative has a maximum second derivative positive has a minimum and for most of the problem that we deal with you can see that the second derivative test works so you can see it's going to work but if it fail what we do we go back to the first derivative test and try it because first derivative test always work so it's, that's very interesting whether uh, there's a sharp corner or smooth it always work so these are the kind of basics that we try to use for our problems that we're trying to um, solve in this one after we know the basics now talk about the strategies to solve optimization problem so optimization problem normally have eight steps uh, you remember in the related rate problems there are only six steps but now we have eight steps so the first one is read and understand the question completely that's very important you need to read the problem maybe multiple times maybe like 10 times that's okay there's nothing wrong with that so read the problem un until you understand the problem completely uh, and while doing that you can actually draw a figure so you're going to draw a figure just to kind of include the information there and then after we do that you're going to select variables you want to see which variable you're going to pick uh, there are like some strategies for that normally what we uh, do is we're going to pick the most common one uh, we start with the most common one or oh, the uh, smallest one then you can because just to avoid fractions we normally do that like we pick the smallest one so then you don't get fractions uh, and then we apply x y t stuff like that and then the most important one is you can write the objective function so when you write the objective function normally at the first step you will get a uh, like a several variable function so it is a several variables so you can get like multiple variable that's okay but the problem is you don't know how to find the op optimal value of a multivariable function right now in this course so what you want to do is then you're going to use the constraints you use the constraint to rewrite the function as a one variable function that's very very important this step is very important 
so you have to rewrite the function as a single variable function using the constraints so this this part will be very clear once we do the problems so and then after we do that then only what we do we're gonna uh, take the derivative you're gonna find the critical points how to find the critical points we take the derivative and there are remember there were two types what are the two types uh, so the from the numerator what we're gonna do so from the numerator what we do we're gonna set that equal to uh, zero and get the values so that's from the numerator those those are the places where the derivative is zero and from the denominator if there's a, like a, a non-constant denominator you can you can set the denominator also equal to zero you set the denominator equal to zero and you also get the like a sharp corners like things like these you get from the denominator okay so that's the second step so sixth step so you will find the critical points after you find the critical points you are not done yet because we know that there's something happening at those places but the problem is you need to justify that you get a maximum minimum so for that what we can do otherwise like you know your problem is not complete because someone asks you to find other maximum value and you just find the critical point and say this is the value how do you know that there's a maximum value so it's not obvious problem so since it's not obvious you need to prove that that's a maximum so what we normally do is you sometimes use the first derivative test or the second derivative depending on the problem and then uh, use the first derivative or second derivative test to justify that um, you get a maximum or minimum okay and after that finally you need to write the optimum value you write the optimum value and you say okay at for these values uh, like you write also the corresponding values just to make sure that uh, you can so that's how you complete the problem so those are the eight steps that we were talking about so now what we can do is we can actually start uh, some, some problems